One thing before you skip this video, you can shoot different levels with this thing. You can shoot shoulder, you can shoot right middle, like high middle and low when you hold it by the handle down here. Actually, you know what? Let me underslanging. So low level underslanging. Medium right here, pretty easy. Can hit the record button. Or by the shoulder and the GH6 has a record button right here at the front. You can always hit that record button. Click and you're all set. We're gonna break this down. Much as this might look a little too big, but it makes life easy when you're shooting handheld. Much as it might seem so bulky, but there's a reason that's why you might rig up your G6 like this. It's a very good camera for B-roll, documentary style. So this is mostly for documentary style, or maybe narrative of short films or any other type of film. So for that fluid flowy kind of look, I use this uh, a lot. I love that look. So of course, why would you rig up your camera like this? Number one for stability, even though the GH6 has uh, stabilization already, but this comes in very handy when you're shooting documentary and B-roll type of stuff. So before we start, you need one of these, or uh, you know, it could be a you need one of these tools to help you open the screws because there's a bunch of screws attached to this whole process. All these are the pieces that we put together, including the uh, follow focus system. I use the motorized one. Um, you're free to choose if you want to use the manual one, but I use the motorized one. So we're going to attach that one as well. I've done a video before with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera where I attach this to it. And also a video about this, this lens right here where you can easily attach. You might not need this. You might you be using one of those photography lenses, not cinema lenses, and you don't need this. And you might want to rack focus with just your fingers. So real quick, not to waste your time, we're going to kick off with this stool. Um, stool number one, very crucial. Um, and we're going to need a, a universal base plate. This is by a company called Nicey Rig. Yeah, they call it a universal base plate. So the reason that's why I'm using this, you might not need it. Probably you might have to uh, go straight to, if you, if you, if you have a, a lens that is not as big as this, you might have to skip this step and go straight away to this small rig VCT uh, shoulder plate, as they call it. Let's attach this universal base plate real quick. Next thing is to attach. Um, is just to attach the plate from this shoulder mount plate, as they call it. Uh, it has a quick kind of this thingy. And and I will slide this in. Yep, I think that helps. So. This step is capable if your lens is not big, if it's a small lens, but as you see this lens is big, if I'm to skip this part, this lens will be hitting this part. So um, yeah, that's why I got this universal base plate. So it's not a must have the universal base plate. So let's going to slide these rods in on which we shall attach our V mount. This is what it looks like. Have some height to attach follow focus, map box and stuff. And I pushed it way further forward because of the build of the camera, the build of the camera. Um, so from there, we're going to attach the uh, V-mount uh, V mount plate. This one specifically, I kind of added some Velcro to attach uh, an SSD holder. So. Future firmware update, they say, I use this on the Black Magic a lot to put like a very fast SSD in it, um, where you can always just attach a cable here that goes to the SSD port. We are going to attach it and make it tight, of course, and add the V mount battery. Boom. So this is what it looks like so far. So in that case, if 
if they do that firmware upgrade recording through SSD like they said if it really happens it's just a matter of attaching a, a very fast SSD a, a USB-C type-c cable from here to down there then I, I'm recording I just change media over here I don't have to you know bother like rigging stuff all above so it's all impact in here uh, with the monitor I got one of these sorry one of these short I think it's a three inch millimeter rods and like I said in the video of the, this cage you can always switch up these top handles so, so this top handle has the option to attach this 15 millimeter rod to hold the monitor and the monitor holder has natural rail supports two pieces this holds the monitor and this other piece um, that kind of supports the monitor holder has a 15 millimeter rod um, female you want to call it thing so you can always insert it so I always use a five inch monitor for this kind of setup um, this monitor here you can always choose this is like the port keys LH5H that's a touch screen and you can always for the black magic pocket cinema camera you can always control by touch and then we uh, we're gonna add this onto the monitor always the top all right we're going piece by piece almost done the front is a different story if you want to attach we want to attach the uh, the mat box and then the 15 uh, millimeter rod the 4 inch or 3 inch uh, depending on how long your camera extends out mine extends out really farther out because of the type of lens so I need like a 4 inch 4 inch or 5 inch millimeter rods that I can attach at the front so we have those and then next I'm going to attach the follow focus and then since the lens is heavy I'm going to add a lens support should be a link for this in the description helps support the lens so it doesn't put too much tension on the mount Yeah, it's getting bigger and heavier. On the side we have the monitor. And this way, not much going on. It's just the follow focus. Almost there, almost there, almost there. And now you can always extend the monitor slightly forward, depending on how much distance you have between, because the shoulder is going to be here. Shoulder is going to be here, so your head is about here. So depending on how close you want the monitor, it's flexible to be extended forward or backward so with this kind of setup I usually like to power the camera off the V mount battery so the GH6 is this dummy battery thing that you can always attach so I'm gonna put in the dummy put in the dummy battery now you see you have all this room, all this flexibility because you have this universal base plate that I talked about in the first place. So you have all this room, flexibility to, you know, do all this. Um, this cable out and close it all up. Lock. Boom. This comes to this puppy. And this, of course, there's a bit of some cable management <laughs> going to happen here. So this snaps in because this kind of uh, cable is safer to use because it has this thing in between that converts the amount of power that's coming from the V mount to the camera so you don't end up burning your camera so there's a bit of cable management to be done here you can always choose to use one of these velcros to kind of manage the cables around because such a long cable so you need to wrap it up USB option Voila, that way the power is all set. So what happens with rigs, um, the HDMI cable sometimes gets in the way. Um, if I just go ahead and just plug the HDMI cable like this, 
if it's just like that it might get into the way like right about here it gets in the way so what I'm going to do is get one of these HDMI adapters that kind of it's kind of carved so it's what I put in first that's what I put in first and connect the HDMI um, now let's attach the handles all right once we attach the handles I would then attach the uh, motorized follow focus controller to the handles that way it's easy for me to once I do attach this on the handles then I can easily pull focus more like you know the good thing about the GH5 that there's a record button right beneath here so if you have this on your shoulder you can always record hit record from here so yeah that's your rig so rigged up complete All right, in conclusion, would I say this is for everybody? Definitely not, because there's so many pieces to put together. It's like putting together a Lego or a puzzle of some sort, but um, um, it works for me. Would I recommend this to anybody? Well, of course, it's not for everybody, of course, but uh, if you that type of person who does a number of narrated projects, short films, probably maybe feature films, well, I would recommend if you have this kind of setup, not to plan to use only one camera it's better to use two cameras with this kind of setup you have a camera that's going to be on a gimbal or on a steady cam or whatever you want or, or whatever you might want to call it and this stays independent as is all you have to do is just take off the monitor take off the handles put in the bag and that's it should be a video about that specific bag if you want to check it out but uh, this kind of cameras uh, usually takes a while to put them together if you're going for uh, a shoot then you have like two camera setups. You have one that is portable, you can rig up in the car, you can put it on the gimbal, and then also this one, depending on how your strategy is, depending on how you plan to shoot whatever you're shooting. If you have a bit of handheld, a bit of motion, then probably it's better to separate the two, not to have the same thing and take everything off, put it on a gimbal balance, that's too much work. But um, you know, it works for me. Sometimes I go on a shoot where I only have this, where I don't need any motion, I don't need any gimbal work. Not every video needs gimbal work, but well, depends on how you shoot. Again, it's not for everybody, it's for certain people. It works for me and it maybe might be working for you. If you found this video helpful, like the video, share the video, subscribe, don't forget, and feel free to drop a comment. And also, I will see you in the next video.